Then you go to Troy at the back end, and he just shuts the door for you, getting out of a couple jams there. Um, what has he kind of meant at the back end for you guys, you know, kind of being just lights out? You know, I think Troy puts a lot of pressure on the team in the other dugout. I mean, I think they feel like they have to force the issue a little bit early and score early because they know who's lurking in the back. We had that feeling with David Berg at UCLA, put some pressure on us knowing that if he got in the game in the eighth inning, it was going to be really difficult on us. And on the flip side, our guys have a lot of confidence and feel like, hey, if we can just get one more and roll him out there, well, the chances are pretty good that we're going to be successful. So it's just a great feeling. It's a you know, the mojo, you talk about it, and, and it's nice to have that momentum in your dugout. How much different is it having a closure that can go multiple innings and come in in a, you know, a, a big situation in the seventh inning rather than only being a one-inning guy? Well, you know, we talk about it all the time. Sometimes the ninth inning isn't the most important inning. You know? And if you have a guy that can go in in the seventh and he can keep the pitch count down and you can roll him out there in the eighth and ninth, that's a, you know, that's a great weapon. And he can really recover. I mean, he's a guy that you know, we, we used as a starter last year at the beginning of the season, but we just wanted him for the last four innings of the game. So you know, we decided to commit to him as a closer. And, and he's a great weapon because he can do both. I mean, he can, you can stretch him out, and he can bounce back the following day and, and still give you one good inning. So. And, you know, with him at the back end, he gives you kind of a, a lights out guy. And you just got to get five, six innings out of your start today, though. Didn't necessarily get that out of Joe. Uh, went with an early hook. What did you kind of see that you, you didn't like or, you know, that you decided to go quick on you that know, one? We just didn't like the way Joe was competing. I mean, you know, unusual for him to not get after people. But, you know, it just was, it was just one of those nights for him where he wasn't feeling it and we couldn't get him going. And... And you know, before the game, he was he was really letting it go, and it was coming out good, and he was throwing hard, and he got out there like some freshmen do, got a little bit tentative, and we felt like uh, Spencer Jones matched up pretty good, and if we could get him in there, he could give us three innings, you know, we might be able to score some runs and get right back in it. And you guys were able to do that. Uh, how were you able to get to Kyle Davis? He was able to get out some jams early. Uh, his defense didn't help him out too much there in the middle innings, and you guys were able to take advantage of it. Yeah, we did a poor job, I thought, in the first few innings of, of chasing pitches out of the strike zone. You know, he bounced a few breaking balls that, that we offered at, and, and we chased a few fastballs that were up. And he's smart. He knows what he's doing, and he moves it around a little bit. And, and once we started to, uh, to show some patience, he walked a guy or two. You know, they had trouble on the infield uh, on a ground ball or two, and that opened the door, and we took advantage of it. You took advantage of it. Chris Baker uh, had a couple of triples in this game. Um, what does he kind of meant in the middle of this lineup for you? You know, Bake's been really steady. Bake has really gotten better, and he's turned himself into a professional hitter. And, you know, he hits the breaking ball now, which he didn't do last year. He uses the whole field, which, you know, he didn't do his first two years. Like a, a lot of young players struggle with, and he's just really given us a presence in that three-hole, a guy that we feel pretty good about giving outs up in front of him get runners in scoring position because he's going to take a good at bat. And we talked a little bit about it before going on camera. The Pac-12 is kind of anybody's race still. You guys now, at this current moment, are tied for first place. At this minute? <laughs> at this minute. Um, what does your team have to do to be successful down the stretch and potentially take that crown? You know, for us, we just have to keep doing what we're doing, but just get better at it. That's what we talked about after the game. We're, we're not somebody – that's going to electrify anybody in terms of arm strength or raw power at the plate or foot speed. I mean, our challenge is to play the game better every day, and that's what's important to us. And we talked about it you know, tomorrow. We have to do everything we did today just a little bit better. We'll start over with that next week. But we just have to not try to run the clock out. We have to try to get better. That's important for us. What would a Pac-12 title mean to this program? You know, I think it would really validate uh, the commitment we've made on campus, facilities, coaching staff, recruiting. I mean, I really think it would, it would send the message that, you know, we're somebody year in and year out that, that feels like they can compete to be in the postseason. And I think it would be a great compliment to our players who, who I don't think received a lot of respect before the season started. I think a lot of people expected us to be in the bottom third of the league. And you know, we don't have the history. We don't have 12 national championships. We don't have the the history Oregon State has, you know, the history UCLA has, and you know, that's where we're trying to get to. We talk about those programs all the time, and our guys have a lot of pride in, in being talked about in that conversation, so it would mean a lot to us.